everyone, thank you so much for joining me in this awesome interview. Stephanie, thank you so much for accepting this interview. Before we begin talking about Cation Impact and your role in it, can you please give us a little bit of background information on you and how you began your journey in the voiceover industry? Yeah, so my background is originally in musical theater and I got my degree in in musical music dance theater was was the name of it, a uh, triple threat. And uh, I went I did that all through college and and did a lot of regional theater and I just got burnt out not having my nights and weekends, but I loved the acting aspect. And so I was like, how can I how can I still act? How can I still use this craft um, that I've worked so hard on and still have time, my, my nights and weekends? And, um, and I just, it, it just kind of fell into place. And I'd always had an interest, obviously, like when I was a kid, let's see, Mrs. Doubtfire was big. Um, and I remember seeing Robin Williams in the booth, his character at the very beginning of the movie and being like, that's that's how they do cartoon voices. And that, <clears throat> that really, uh, excuse me, that really piqued my interest as a kid. And, um, and obviously with his iconic roles with the genie and Aladdin and, you know, he just seeing his career it always was in the back of my mind. And that kind of seed was planted and it took a lot of years to, to let it grow. But, um, yeah, so that's where my interest came. And then, um, after making the decision to step away from theater, after being a little burnt out with things, um, my husband and I decided to move to LA instead of doing the New York thing. And he's a sound engineer. And, uh, so we, we kind of <laughs> fell in, fell into this world together, but yeah, we moved out here and I started working at the voice caster, which is a commercial voiceover casting house. And, uh, it really built helped me build a foundation in voiceover. I, I learned, uh, or I, I met a lot of agents. I, I learned, you know, different styles of, of voiceover from commercial to, um, to animation and video games and, um, just expanded my knowledge working there. And obviously I, I was also taking classes at the same time, uh, really trying to hone my, my own skills. And yeah, that's kind of, that's the journey <laughs> in a nutshell, a, a very brief nutshell, brief nutshell. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> in a brief nutshell, can you please tell us what was your first gig? My first project. Well, let's see if we're, if we're going back to like when I very first started, my very first voiceover booking was a Honda commercial is for Honda fit. And, uh, <laughs> and it was literally five words. It said, it, cause the, the commercial was all about like how the Honda fit is small, but it can fit a lot of people. And, uh, and I was a Valley girl in this commercial. And all I said was, uh, can it tell me I'm pretty? <laughs> That's like all, all I said, so that was my very first voiceover job. And then, um, and then from there, you know, I, I've, I've done a lot of commercial work, but then, um, as far as video games and animation go, uh, Shadowverse was my first uh, first game that I was cast in. And then from there, it was uh, I did a, an independent game called Shing. It actually just came out recently, but I had worked on that for a while. And um, and gosh, there's there's a whole bunch of of like little ones here and there, and. Uh, and I feel like it's just kind of all been building and building until now with Genshin Impact. Let's not forget Fire Emblem Heroes. Fire Emblem Heroes, uh-huh. And that one came out. So uh, I play the role of Freya, our dear lady of uh, Lady Lady Nightmare. Oh, gosh, I'm butchering everything right now. Let's see. Freya, Lady of Nightmare. Yep, I was right. It was cast in Fire Emblem Heroes last year. The fans really love Freya, and she's a, she's a wonderful antagonist, and she she has a good heart but she's complicated. So that's, it's been an honor to be a part of that franchise. And uh, the incredible cast is, is just such an honor to work alongside. So what about in anime? What was your first anime title? My first role in anime uh, was actually in Sword Art Online, Alicization War of Underworld. And uh, I played the role of Lenju and um, she's a, uh, a troll and, um, and, just really a sweet, sweet character. And 
yeah, I, I feel really, really fortunate. Um, that Bang Zoom brought me in for that and, uh, got to be a part of such a big thing, but yeah, that was my very first anime role. And, um, it's just such an honor to be a, to be a part of that. Wow, that must have been very exciting for you, voicing your first anime character in a very popular series. Yeah, essentially, and and I feel like I'm still, an like in my my voiceover career infancy right now. Like, um, still, uh, the ball is rolling, and and I'm booking little by little, um, more anime characters. Um, most recently, Pixie in um in the irregular at magic high school um and she's a fun wonderful character i just feel like i'm really fortunate to have so far been able to play characters that i identify i feel like i identify with in some way or another and oftentimes that seems to be how it how it goes uh for me moving on to geishan impact and your role as jean how much time did it take to develop the voice of Jean for the game? You know, her voice is pretty similar to my natural voice. And it was just finding kind of that that calmness that she has, that resolute um, drive to do what's best for the people of Mondstadt. And so it's just really just like calming my voice down and, and taking that initiative, taking charge. So it really wasn't... Um, a ton of work to find the voice or the character really i feel like i'll say it over and over again um that jean is so similar to my personality we don't we both don't know how to stop working um and then chris our english voice director he has said uh so many times that the the characters picked us we didn't he didn't cast us he the characters picked us because all of us in the cast have qualities that line up really well uh, with these characters. That's how I feel that I identify with Jean, you know? I uh, I wanna do what's best for people and I don't know how to stop myself and <laughs> I sometimes make myself a little tired. <laughs> she's not only just like a, she's not just a, like a secretary or, you know, an office worker. Um, she's also strong and capable and she's an incredible fighter and really wants to do what's right and i just think it's so empowering to to voice a character who who cares so deeply about what she does how would you describe your experience of voicing this character as to oppose other characters you've done in other video games or anime series um as far as the um as far as the character goes and as far as the direction goes it's really not so much a different character uh and by that i mean like she's grounded she's she's stephanie like when stephanie's in focus mode um that's just i hopped in the booth and i did my thing and um whereas a lot of other characters maybe it was putting on putting on a little bit of a different voice and of course the acting um uh is always always has to be present but um i think because I identify so strongly with Jean. It was just easier for me to connect to her and to her her goals, her mission, her objectives. Are there any Jean character traits that you like? Yeah, for sure, for sure. So so Jean is just very um she's very driven. She's very responsible. She's very uh organized. She really she wants what's best for the people of Mondstadt. Her priorities are to do what's what's right. So she's she's just a great responsible leader uh, for the people of Mondstadt. Our acting our acting grandmaster. <laughs> Did you ever expect this game to become the worldwide phenomenon that it is now? It's interesting because I yeah I hadn't heard of this and it was going by um, like a, a code name and um, so I didn't I didn't know the full title of it so I couldn't really look up anything about it and when uh when I got the audition I read on I think I read on like Amber and Paimon and a whole bunch of 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 different roles and when I opened the audition for Jean I was like I like her I really really like her and um just felt that connection from early on I had no knowledge of what this game would be about but just felt like a, a real strong connection to this character and then I got called back for uh, to read on on Jean and you know one thing led to another and I booked it but um but yeah I had no knowledge of it prior to this and so 
to go from from not knowing anything about it to now seeing where it's at, where it's just massive. And it went through the beta tests and the hype was was building about it. And um, and people were starting to say it's like uh, Breath of the Wild, um, similar to that. Uh, it, it was just kind of cool to see that that hype building uh, about it. Yeah, this game has it all from, you know, really great storylines to very unique and enticing characters all, you know, bundled in this open world universe where you can do basically whatever it is that you want in this, you know, whole universe. And I think that's what entices people to play the game. And again, I haven't seen this much hype for a mobile game ever since probably, aside from Fate Grand Order, um, probably the Kingdom Hearts game that was released back in 2013, 2015, and maybe a Girls Frontline. Oh, and of course, Pokemon Go. How can I forget? Yeah, isn't it amazing too? Like, it is so, it's so beautiful to look at for one thing. And when I first started playing, I just was like exploring everywhere. I spent a, a good couple of weeks like not doing anything, just like running around as far as I could and like collecting Sunsetia and, and whatnot and apples and uh, whatnot. And um, it's just so beautiful to look at. And then when you start playing, uh the the stories and and um getting into that world it just keeps building and building and building and it's really like mihoyo is like incredible for being able to deliver such a an all-encompassing game that really gives you this full experience and you feel like you're really a part of this world and yeah it's just it's really like I feel like it's hard for me to find words to explain like how how amazing it feels to be a part of something so big and so amazing and I feel like amazing is is not even the right word like it's just a really incredible incredible world um, to get to to get to be a part of I, I'll just repeat myself three times. <laughs> Are there any current projects that you're working on that you're allowed to speak of? There's a few, uh, there's quite a few uh, still under NDA. I mean, it, as far as like uh, animation goes, like the, an ongoing project that I have been a part of is VeggieTales. They did a reboot this year, um, the VeggieTales show. And uh, and that's been really cool because I grew up uh, watching it and, and um, you know, I was, I was like the too cool, like 10 year old older sister. My little brother watched it and I was like, this is so, this is like for babies. But then I was like watching it in the, in the background. And, uh, so that's been, that's been incredible. That's an ongoing project that I am able to talk about. Another one is Polly Pocket. Um, I am part of the 3d, uh, the 3d passport adventures is the series that's on YouTube that, uh, is ongoing and it's fun to, uh, to be a part of that and to be a, a part of the Polly Pocket franchise, uh, specifically playing the role of Polly herself. And so that's been really fun, but everything else is like NDA, 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 Genshin Impact and VeggieTales and Polly Pocket, kind of different, different worlds there. <laughs> Well, I can't wait to see all that in action. I'm sure your fans do as well. And some of the other people that you have interviewed, I'm like, wow, they they have been in this a long time, much longer than I have, and really have such a oh, oh, an expansive uh, resume. And I feel like I'm still in my infancy. But it is exciting to see things coming out that I've been working on and to, to just to get to do what I do and and have a career that I love is really um, it's really special. It's really an incredible feeling. Very happy to see you're expanding that resume and that IMDb profile. Moving away from your voice acting career, what are some hobbies you enjoy doing? Ooh, that's that's a great question because uh, in true Jean fashion, Jean doesn't know how to stop working, so so it takes a little bit of a like pulling me away from 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 my computer or my booth. Um, but one thing that has really, in a way, taken over my spare time is fostering kittens. It's so, it's so fun. And when, when I first decided, when my husband and I first decided to start fostering kittens, we were like, oh, this will be fun. We'll, we'll just do, we'll just do this for a little while. And it has just become such a light. And, you know, they're these little innocent kittens who are 
uh, well, we 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 first started uh, with like the more hissies they call them. Now now we call them they're they're in the kitten charm school where they're learning to so they're learning to uh, have good manners. Um, but uh, we we our first batch of kittens they were a little bit older and they were just really scared of humans. And so we we have the Pareto method down where you roll them up real nice and tight so their little arms can't can't uh, reach out and scratch you. Uh, and uh, so uh, so we we've done. Actually, right now we have a, a little scaredy girl, but she's coming. Al- she's come a long, a long way. Um, but yeah, so we, so we, our first batch was hissies, and then we got um, bottle babies. Our first batch of bottle babies. They're this big. They're like three inches tiny. They were like hours old, and um, and someone had found them and uh, brought them to the shelter. And usually, gosh, I don't want to get too far into it. Um, but like usually if you see tiny, tiny kittens, like still, you know, neonates, um, fresh newborn, their mom is nearby either hunting for food or she's moving them one at a time. Um, that's just a method that, that mama cats do just to uh, uh, keep the kitten safe and whatnot. But um, so you usually if you see tiny kittens, you sit and wait for a while, make sure mama's coming back. You observe from a distance, um, but someone I don't I don't think this person who brought them to the shelter knew, and um, so they called us and were like, "Can you can you guys foster four tiny tiny babies?" And we were like, "Sure, sure." And um, it's a lot of it's a lot of work. It's every two hours you're you're bottle feeding, and um, so uh, we learned how to not sleep, <laughs> and. Um, but, uh, yeah, so that obviously when we have bottle babies, that takes up a lot of my spare time. And then as they get older, you get, you know, space, space out feedings and, and whatnot. Um, and then they start to eat on their own, which is like, hallelujah, <laughs> you don't have to wake up every couple of hours. Um, so we would like set our alarm every, every two hours and, and you just hear these little tiny squeaks coming from the other room from their little container. And, and, uh, and, uh, anyway, long story short, uh, from the, our very first batch of bottle babies, uh, we ended up adopting two of them and we call them the mamas now. Cause they, whenever we get new kittens, they're like, they're like doting on these little babies and cleaning them and snuggling them. And it's, it's so fun. So, so yeah, animals basically take up my life. Um, <laughs> Going back to your question, though, some of the other things I enjoy doing, I really love uh, graphic design, and I just do that for fun on the side. I don't, I don't typically um, do much uh, work uh, professionally on that; just more of my own hobby uh, kind of thing. Um, and I also work uh, for the Voice Actors Network, which is a, a network that is for uh, working professionals uh, who are wanting to. Uh, meet and expand um their their personal network and their professional network of voice actors and and people uh industry professionals and so i do um some graphic design um as far as like social media posts for for them it's just jean she just has like a million things going on she's still working even though she's (laughs) she's enjoying it but um but yeah graphic design is another thing um that I enjoy doing quite a lot. One of these days, I'm gonna get back into the dance studio after COVID's over. Um, I grew up a dancer, and um, and I had just been like looking up, like, okay, where am I gonna go uh, now that I'm in LA? Where am I gonna go take some classes? And then COVID hit, and it was like, okay, let's put that on the back burner once again. But I am excited to start dancing again. That that's always I do enjoy like being able to move my body and connect with music and all of that. So, yeah. So that's my, there's some hobbies, cats, cats, graphic design and dance. (laughs) What tips or advice would you give to those watching us right now who want to become voice actors? I think the biggest thing is get into acting classes. Um, I think there's this misconception, like I have a cool voice or I have, um, I can do impressions and that's great and and it's wonderful and and certainly will help you but the number one thing is acting and um 
so take scene study classes, take improv, take, um, take, you know, um, basic acting classes, like get really get your foundations in acting so that you can then use your, your cool voice or, you know, your impression, like use whatever to, um, to build a character. But yeah, you want to make sure that you have your acting foundations first and foremost. Um, that's, yeah, I'd say that's my number one piece of advice. And the moment we've all been waiting for, can you please provide us with the beloved voice of Jean? I am Jean, the Dandelion Knight, requesting approval to join your party. From this day onwards, my honor and loyalty lie with you. Oh. Okay, so let's see another quote here, a Jean line. <clears throat> Jean quote, Jean line, all the same, right? Uh, okay, I shoulder the knight's trust and the people's hope. It is for this reason I must stay vigilant. I must say that Amber's development has impressed me recently. I hope that one day her deeds will become the words of a bard's tale. Like the main lines that Jean says, like, um, as the wind continues to blow, so too shall I continue to fight. Like those ones I, I remember, but there's so many that I'm like, oh, I forgot about that one. And and I have I don't have Jean yet, so I, I don't hear I don't hear what what I what I've done one day like oh there's this one here um when Lisa is around I always have peace of mind that's 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 what you get <laughs> unfortunately guys this is the end of the interview but before we go Stephanie is there anything else you would like to say to your fans my parting words <laughs> let the wind lead <laughs> how's that <laughs> it's our, our onwards we have work to do <laughs> it's been so fun thank you <laughs> Here's, here's a fun fact. Um, so my maternal and paternal grandmother's middle names were Jean and my sister's middle name is Jean. And so it just, I feel like it connects me to the sisterhood of my, I was born for this. <laughs> I know if only, if only my, my sister's middle name were my middle name and then I were ma my middle name were Jean, then it would like really be like kind of coincidental. I mean, it already is, but you know. <laughs> anyway, a little fun fact. So there you go. Thank you so much, Stephanie, for joining us here at the Kitsune Network. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Don't click away just yet, it's giveaway time. You guys have the opportunity to win this awesome print signed by Stephanie Southland, aka Jean. All you have to do is comment below as to which is your favorite code or line from Jean, and you'll automatically be entered. Good luck, and thank you for watching. Love you. Bye. Amber, uh? we're rolling. Sorry, Barbara. Hi, travelers. It's me, Amber. It's been a while. You miss me?